many uh, don't want to be unwound. I'm the only, probably, or well, one of the only Remainers on talk TV. And I love my audience on talk TV. I'm not just saying it. They're, they're, they're wonderful. But I, as a, I fail in my journalism quite a lot, I think, because I don't, I, I try and actively avoid the B word. And if I do go near it, I... Oh, what's that? You've just well, talked to you. The position that you've been put in by your employer's ideological bent means that you have to be quiet about the views that you hold. Hmm. That's a, that's a weird paradigm, isn't it, Christo? You're on, you're on GB News. No shit, you failed at journalism. True. I have to say what's going on, but I have to do it in a way to say, look, I'm not... As Laura Koonsberg did. Look, I'm not saying whether this is right or wrong. I'm just trying to express what's going on because the vitriol mm. that you, well, you get... I, well, yeah, I don't need to I tell you two this. I don't need to tell any of you this. But what I'm saying is because, and look, people who... Decent people, good people, still feel so... Some have changed their minds, without a doubt, but yeah. some feel so emotionally tied to that vote to leave. It's and, the footballification, as James O'Brien calls it. It's become a passion, become their team. And, and, and they don't... They just don't. The, uh, the gigantic irony of liberals talking about uh, other people turning politics into a football team sport. Though, to be fair, Marina's better than most of this stuff, but she's been criticizing Starmer, so I'm, I'll, let her I'll let her go for that. He's literally describing cancel culture. Well, yeah, exactly. It's fucking Dixie Chicks all over again. I want to hear it. They just don't well, want well, to hear it. We saw it in the midterm in the US. It doesn't matter how much fact you can you you give to people. You showed people, you know, the inauguration of Trump and the photographic evidence of the inauguration of, of Obama versus Trump. And you know, fifteen percent. This is actually an academic study by social scientists that fifteen percent of Trump supporters still say, confronted with the two photographs, mm. that the Trump inauguration had more people because they're emotionally invested in something that they can't come back from. So that, this is a whole. This is very dangerous, and that's where I think in politics at the moment, talking about things like Hancock and, and what's going on there is actually distracting from the really serious issue we've got, which is we have a public who have been manipulated and we don't know how to get them to trust us again. And if in, the public doesn't trust institutions, doesn't trust what they're being told, and are going to react emotionally... Because well, they, they shouldn't trust into the institutions, uh, and they're right not to trust them, because the institutions have been captured by a neoliberal ideological groupthink, and neoliberalism explicitly has to lie to people to continue its existence. Like, they sh they're absolutely right not to trust these things because they've been captured by capitalism, by capital assets, have creeped into every single part of our economy because everything's been over-privatised, right? Prof the profit motive has infected every facet of the institutions of our society. And people are like, I can't believe people have stopped trusting them. Yes, of course, because they're inherently untrustworthy now. Like, neoliberalism did it every single time. It's fucking neoliberalism. Every time we end up in a very chaotic place. And that's, we're there already, but it's getting worse and worse. No, because it's, it's, it's the betrayal, it's the betrayal. And because the whole reason why Brexit happened in the beginning is because of those of generations of neglect to those areas outside of London yeah. and the, the North, Wales, etc. And people who had voted Labour their entire lives, believed, and hated the Tories because of Thatcher, the de industrialization of the North, etc. And they saw the Tories and Brexit as their final chance to really change the system. And immigration, let's not forget immigration. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's the changing material needs and material interests. These people are homeowners. These people are you. These people got um, on the housing ladder because of Thatcher, right? Their material interests have changed now that they're retired. It's demographic shift, right? It's a miracle that they were voting Labour up until this point in the red wall seats. It's not them flailing around wanting to vote Tories to get Brexit done. It's because they changed their material interests, right? <laughs> and actually also, Boris Johnson was pretty centrist in his economic policy. He explicitly was became more centrist in his economic policy, specifically to woo these swing voters, right? Again, liberals will look at Boris Johnson being a blithering idiot and a fool and a scandal-ridden monster, right? And then they will use that as to completely dismiss him as an electoral candidate. When actually, the things that he was selling to people outside of Brexit in his particular platform, levelling up was a, a, was, a plat was an economic platform explicitly designed to target red wall seats, people in the north who'd felt their communities had been abandoned by you know, Labour councils in their area, right? Westminster in general, but also Labour councils as well. And he was someone who wasn't part of the Tory elite or the, the kind of the regular Tories that they sing. He was a blustering, you know, new showman rather than 
you know, the kind of safe pair of hands that people usually expect to be at the head of the Conservative Party, right? There was this new kind of Tory, very, very different to what they'd seen before, and promising them regeneration in their communities that had been abandoned by Westminster and their predominantly Labour councils. And because Liberals literally cannot think of a reason why someone would vote for Boris Johnson because they see him as being a ridiculous figure, because he is, they just won't even bother scrutinising his his economic policy platform because they can't think of it as being and they 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 don't even want to think about it because they're too busy about thinking of boris johnson the oath which is again a failure of liberalism being entirely entirely obsessed with aesthetics and refusing to take into account you know the actual material you know things that are being put on offer on as a policy platform god so frustrating Right or wrong. Immigration would have been a factor, but it was, it was it was a tool used to aggravate that factor because it was a tool of saying yeah. the, the, the system isn't working for you, and the reason why it's not working for you is because the money's going to migrants, etc. But the, the core thing was the lack of care and the lack of support to those areas that have been left behind, and the people who were behind that for the idea that they got into power knowing it would make them poorer. That's such a betrayal that it, once that switch flips and they realize, no, 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 Boris Johnson, all these people, they held themselves out as our last hope and they actually tried to hurt us. And that's the thing, because like, occasionally I'll talk to people and they'll be like, Femi, you need to be more nice. Some people, they got into politics to like help people. No, none of the Tories did. Every single Tory stood in that election. Every single one of them stood on a promise of doing Brexit. After, the, in 2018, the, the, the government analysis showed that no matter what they negotiated, any version of Brexit would make people poor, which means that they got into power specifically to make the people of the UK poor, and now here we are. But you know, a lot of people that now, and you must get these as well, will tweet about this and will say, I don't care. Yes, I, I, yeah, I don't care. It's not about some people saying it's not about the economy. It's not about yeah, the economy. None of them will realise this shit. It wasn't about economics. I mean, it may have been about economics for some people. It certainly was for Mick Lynch, right? He was, certainly was an economic position that he took for Brexit. It was like, we need to get out of the European Union so that in future we can do the full communism because you can't do that if you're a member of the EU. <laughs> right? Now, I get that. I get that being a pipe dream. and I obviously wouldn't have done that, but... This idea that everyone who voted Brexit is a monolith as well is, is another thing that liberals keep doing that they need to stop doing. It's going up to people and saying, well, the OBR says that we've had a 4% drop in nominal GDP because of the issues related to Brexit. They don't give a shit. They're not going to, no one's going to move over to you on the basis of 4% drop in, in nominal GDP. What they're going to tell you, I'll tell you is, how am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to deal with this kind of things, right? Femi has a gigantic platform. He could be talking about rent controls. He could be talking about nationalisation. He could be talking about tax, child tax credits. He could be talking about, you know, all of these kind of things. But he's spending so much time on an issue of that is nebulous in nature, difficult to convince people on and myopic, that it's just a waste of a good platform. I understand it's good for clicks. All of the FB, hashtag FBP people on Twitter will share your videos going, oh, look at him mocking the Brexit people. But it's, is it going to convince anybody? And the answer is no. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as you know, overall utility, is it going to fix the country? Also, no. You, I really think that a lot of people should watch Gary Stevenson's videos in that the damage has been done. The rich people have gotten more rich than they could ever have hoped to be. And the damage to the country's economy will be irreparable unless we institute wealth taxes and we take away, we, 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 we start requisitioning some of the property that's been bought up by these mega conglomerates and these big, these, these gigantic multi property landlords and put them back into the social sector. You think, again, that's where all this money's gone. It's gone into housing, right? Just reversing Brexit. It's not going to fix any of that. The economy is fundamentally broken, and it was fundamentally broken before we left. The GDP may have been growing. Where was that all going to? Where was the money that we were generating? All the economic growth, where was that going to? Just going to rich people. Poor people were still worse off, right? And that's why going to them and saying, you know, think of all the extra GDP that we'll have, with um by rejoining the european union they're not going to care it's not and it's not actually going to have any overall kind of utilitarian gain so if you're listening femi you in in future please 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 just shut up about brexit at least i mean may, maybe talk about it sometimes but don't just make it your life's work 
to try and rejoin the European Union when our economy is fundamentally fundamentally broken and in and out of the EU, neoliberalism is the real issue and the real enemy we need to be fighting against.